Hello guys. So in this video, we will go through the next lesson uh, of this unit called adding custom business logic. So in the previous unit, we have understood uh, event handling in cap. And now we will go through explaining the need for custom business logic. So the need for custom business logic, what is the usage scenario? CAP provides a high level abstraction for building cloud native or side by side extension applications. So that we have understood that we create side by side extension applications in CAP. But there will be use cases when you are creating such side by side extension applications that your extension application need to provide some custom logic to meet your specific business requirements. So custom logic in CAP allows you to extend and customize the default behavior of the framework. So basically, say for example, your CAP application or the CAP service which you have created, that CAP service need to say, for example, interact with some external service in a synchronous or an asynchronous manner. So to achieve this, CAP provides some service APIs okay, to for your application to interact with other external services. So introducing service API for custom logic. Now custom code is the logic that you will add to your application to express things like data validation, enrichment, calculation, integration with external systems and any other custom processing. So these are the requirements where you will need to write custom code in your CAP application or in your CAP service. So there are four types of APIs which are provided by CAP to write custom code in your CAP service. So here it is mentioned number one, two, three, and four. One is construct reflection API. API mostly used when bootstrapping provided services or when connecting required ones. Querying API is synchronous APIs used by consumers to interact with a service. Messaging API, asynchronous APIs used by consumers to interact with a service. So option number two and option number three, they are basically used when your CAP service needs to interact with some external service, either in a synchronous or in an asynchronous manner. Then number four is event handling. This we have already seen that we register event handlers in our CAP service to write some custom code for handling uh, use cases which are not fulfilled by the regular CRUD operations which are provided by the CAP framework. In this diagram, you can see that your service which you have created your CAP service, it is interacting with external services, making use of these four types of APIs. Now construct reflection API, this deals with constructing and looking things up in services and connecting to other required ones. For this, they have mentioned that this is not commonly used and you will not deal too much with these. Let us move on to the next one, querying API. This API, you, you can use this API to query other APIs, external APIs in a synchronous manner. So this is a query API through which you can send synchronous queries to services, including databases, right? Messaging API, this is an asynchronous counterpart of the query API which services can send messages to one another. Now event handling, we have already seen what event handling is. These are used to register custom event handlers. So we can see that our service cap service is interacting with some external services, say consumer UI or service using synchronous or asynchronous querying or messaging API. Then it is also interacting with the event handler and it is also interacting with some database or local or remote service using synchronous or asynchronous API. So in the figure, we can see that uh, the services appears twice. So what does this mean? We can see service here, we can see service here. So it means that services can mean our own service, which we provide in our CAP application, or it can also denote some remote service from other application, or it can also mean in database in which we have the same APIs as for programming models. So service can mean your own service, which you have developed. It can also mean a remote service, which you want to access or interact with. So this is what we have learned in this particular lesson. Now the focus uh, on the APIs around registering event handlers in the runtime system. So that is that will be the focus in this learning journey. Now we will go through the next lesson, which talks about describing error handling. 
error handling in CAP SDK for Node.js, what we have to do for error handling. First of all, we have to understand that error handling is key to ensuring robustness, correctness, and performance of the application. And building such robust applications which handle and throws exceptions at the right time, it is very critical for the business. So we will in, we will get introduced to the basic concepts of exception handling in Node.js as well as specific techniques for the CAP service SDK. Error handling and error types. Proper error handling is crucial for today's business applications. So there are two types of errors. One is programmer error. These types of error occur as a result of programming errors. Say for example, a variable is undefined. So these type of errors must be corrected by the programmer. Second are operational errors. These type of errors occur, say for example, if your application is trying to interact with a, with a service which resides in a remote system and the remote system is sending a faulty response or it is, is not available. So these type of errors are called operational errors and they must be corrected. So the guideline is first and foremost is let it crash. So this is a philosophy taken from Erlang programming language and it is also partially applicable to Node.js. The key takeaways are fail loudly. So do not hide your errors and continue silently. If there is an error, you should ensure to log the unexpected error. Don't catch errors you can't handle. Now, don't develop in a defensive fashion. So you should focus on your business logic and only handle errors when you know they will occur. Use try-catch blocks only when necessary. So you don't develop in a defensive fashion and fail loudly. If there is an error which can't be handled, which is an unexpected error, those type of errors, you should throw those errors, ensure to log those unexpected errors and don't continue silently by hiding the errors. Now, never try to catch and handle unexpected errors. This is a basic principle. Say, for example, rejection of promises and so on. If there is an unexpected error, you cannot handle it correctly. If it is an expected error, then you have to be, then you have to handle it correctly. Now, even if your apps should be stateless, you can never be 100% sure that a shared resource was not affected by an unexpected error. So you should never allow an app to continue running uh, after such an event, so for, especially in multi-tenant applications where you are interacting with say multiple services and multiple systems. So now the guide, following guidelines, it will make your code shorter, clearer and simple. So let's see, go through the guidelines, never hide the causes of errors. So whenever an error occurs, it should be possible to know the root cause. The CAP SDK will throw an exception. Say, for example, if there is an issue with the CRUD operation, which is handled by the CAP framework itself, the CAP framework will throw some exception. So in this case, in this particular uh, example or scenario, if the CAP framework throws the exception unique constraint violated. So this is the error message which you will see. So this is what the user will see. If you if you propagate that message to the user directly, this is what the user will see, unique constraint violation. So it is therefore useful to provide a meaningful error message. We should provide a meaningful error message to the user. So for this purpose, you can register an error handler in your service implementation. Here you can see that this is an error handler implemented in our service implementation. So if there is an error on error, what we are doing, we are checking what is the error message. And if the error message is unique constraint violation, we provide a meaningful error message to the end user. The handler now steps in whenever the exception gets triggered and it overrides it with an alternate error message. So we can see now a proper understandable error message is being given to the user. Raising and catching exceptions, you will certainly add your implementations to your services. It is very likely that you want to interrupt some operations before something crashes. In this case, you, you can throw a Node.js exception. Now request response. So when, when your service is getting triggered, okay, 
when your service is getting executed, you what you can do, you can make use of the request rec dot error method to collect the messages or errors and return them to the caller. So in this example, you can see this is again um, a custom implementation of a particular service. So if an error occurs, if there is a scenario where you want to give some error message to the back to the caller, you can make use of the rec dot error method to provide a meaningful error message. In summary, the code error handling concepts in S in CAP SDK for Node.js are now familiar to you and it is strongly recommended to incorporate these concepts.